Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video. Today I'm in Lewisburg, Tennessee, visiting my friends Brittany and Anthony, the Wild Rebel Farmhouse. And this is their homestead. Uh, they've been homesteading for just two years now. So still pretty new, but they've got a lot of experience and they've got a lot of really cool methods I'm excited to show you guys about. A lot of holistic methods using different essential oils and herbs to treat their animals. Um, they have chickens uh, for eggs, meat chickens, they've raised pigs, and they have cows as well. Um, so they've got a lot of cool stuff going on here. I'm excited to show you guys. So come on, let's go check out their homestead. Honey, Honey will probably breed. And um, we don't really want a bull on our farm, so. It's kind of dangerous or just? Yeah, and we have, you know, we have pepper and mm -hmm. we just don't want to deal with a bull. So <laughs> we're going to, for right now, we're going to do artificial insemination. The vets do that or you can mm -hmm. hire somebody. There's actually people that do it professionally. Oh, wow. So we're going to do that. Neat. And then you can order your, your semen online. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird. It's so weird. Like this is. You like, can like choose your um. You can. Choose your bull and I know, the I genetics like, and. I was like, Anthony, we should breed Highlander cows. Let's only have Belted Galloway and Highlanders, because <laughs> Rosie's um or Sophia is a Belted Galloway, so an Oreo cow. <laughs> and we nice. live in. We're in. Um, this town was founded by Scottish people, so I'm like, let's have Scottish cows. Yeah, that's really so fun. I'm like, oh. Yeah, but I think we're gonna we're gonna go that route for now, and we'll see where we go from there. Yeah. I mean, eventually, if we get enough cows and we expand things, then maybe we'll just end up with having a bull on the farm. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a big next step, though. To, and then to go there, you know, so. when you buy a bull, you need to. Anthony has a whole book on it, like how you want your bull to look. Like it needs a certain body, and like. Yeah. All this stuff. So it has, so it has like the right genetics and strength yeah, and all this right. sort of thing. And I don't want to just order just any sperm. Yeah. I want the best. <laughs> yeah, you got it. that's right. That's bacon what he, grease. Yeah, bacon grease. And I just uh, feed them their alfalfa. Like I could, I'll do it today. Mm -hmm. Feed them their alfalfa and their garlic and stuff. See, she's like, where's my alfalfa? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll put the bacon grease over their eyes. Like I'll just put like a smear of it. Uh -huh. And then I'll just, I think. And then that helps with the flies over their eyes. Yeah, it keeps the wow. flies away. Which is really weird because you would think that it would attract flies. Yeah. But I don't know, it works. So this is just alfalfa mixed with garlic and uh -huh. a mineral, the mineral mix that I was telling you about. Oh, nice. Um, and then I usually add kelp. I'm all out of milk, so. So you get lots of different minerals and. Mm. And then, so you can also, um, a friend of mine, she has cows and she orders predator flies. Oh, so they're like smaller flies that you mm -hmm. release, but you have to start it early in the season. And I missed oh. the window this year. Some of their population builds up out here and... Yeah, so what the predator flies is you start it like before the flies start to come, mm -hmm. before their season. And then the predator flies eat the larva of the regular fly. Oh. And then that's how you kind of, and you release them every couple of weeks and mm -hmm. then they control the fly population. So next year... That's really cool. ...gonna have them ordered some, on time. Yeah, it's some balance the population. <laughs> so we can start, get ahead of it. Spray with apple cider vinegar and a bunch of different essential oils that the flies don't like. Nice. So I'll spray that on them when they're eating their alfalfa and minerals uh -huh. and kelp and stuff and the garlic. It's it's it works for a time, yeah. but it's not like a good long-term solution. Yeah, a lot so, of the organic stuff it, it works, but it's just it's not persisting like the, the you know the chemicals. Well, you have to be consistent with yeah. it, and it's hard when they're out in the field and just you know having a good day, and I don't want to go bug them and spray yeah. them again. <laughs> so that's why I want to do the fly thing next year, the yeah. predator flies, and then hopefully with the combination of everything, we can like get the fly population down. Cool. You're never gonna ever get fully rid of flies when you mm -hmm. have cows. It's just a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can keep it down, is better. It makes them more comfortable. And, yeah, because yeah. I wouldn't want flies on me. Like, oh yeah, gross. Yeah. <laughs> so, right? You don't want flies. So I wanted to ask you about the. I noticed that the the two female cows they have udders. So can you milk yeah. them or, or what's going on with that? I mean, you could if you wanted to, yeah. but I don't want to. <laughs> Yeah. So they're beef cattle, uh -huh. so their calves
calves are just on them right now and getting all of the milk and the nourishment for them. And we don't really want to milk them, so... So the milk quality is just not as good on a cattle? From a what I've cattle. read, um, the fat content is not as high as like a dairy cow, as like a Jersey or a Guernsey, yeah. which is what I want. Yeah. So, so do you guys hope to get dairy cows someday? Yeah. yeah. I want to get a dairy cow. Oh, I want to have a, a farm milk and cow someday. Yeah. That will be the next step. After we figure out how to inseminate our cows yes. first. Yeah, there's so much sperm. to learn with them. <laughs> There, so this, this animal is like way harder than chickens, right? This well, is, I feel what do you like, think? I don't know. Cows are, I feel like they're so, they're, to me, I feel like they're kind of easy animals. They're oh. very hardy. Uh -huh. I don't know. They're my favorite. They're I favorite. love my chickens too, but they're just, they're really hardy animals and they're, they're easy. We run them on, on grass and like, we're still learning everything, mm -hmm. but so far they've been one of the easiest. Pigs are really fun and they're really easy too. And we really enjoyed our pigs. Nice. But I don't know. I'm sticking with the pigs, the chickens, and the cows. Those are your favorites. Those yeah. are my favorites. And so they do far. really well here in Tennessee. I think so. Yeah, you were telling me the the goats are not goats, as goats. Um, the smaller animal. ruminant animals don't seem to do as well, even though everyone loves goats. Yeah. I just I want to do everything holistically with herbs and yeah. do of all that stuff. I want to avoid chemical dewormers because that goes into your soil right. and then yeah. it actually kills off beneficial bugs. Yeah. So I don't want to deal with chemical dewormers. And you know, when you have goats in Tennessee, the parasites never, they never like, we never get a hard enough frost to kill things off. I see. Yeah. So they're really susceptible to parasites. And we had llamas and alpacas and we lost three, uh, or well, three of them for sure we lost to M worm, which oh, wow. is um, a genital worm. It comes from the deer, the white-tailed deer. Oh wow. It's really strange. They they poop out this parasite, and the snail eats the parasite, and then the llama and the alpaca eat the snail on accident, oh like gosh. while it's on the grass. Yeah. And then the worm actually attacks their spinal cord Whoa. and their brain. So it's not an it's not a digestive parasite where it's like mm -hmm. just in their digestive system, and you can use a chemical dewormer to get rid of it. Yeah. It's really difficult to get rid of. Wow. Um, That's freaky. Yeah, and it's a really it's so those animals are really hard to maintain holistically mm -hmm. in our area. My friend Pam, she has goats. Sorry for the bacon grease. <laughs> bacon grease hands. Yeah. <laughs> I was just telling him, I was like, hmm, maybe bacon grease is the new hair selling product. <laughs> it's looking <laughs> <Like>, good. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. I don't know. It's probably starting to get really gross. Anyways, that little trick I learned from my dairy farmer. So I have nice. no idea where he learned that, but my friend Pam raises goats holistically. She lives just a little bit north of us, maybe 20 miles. And it's a lot of work to keep her animals healthy, thriving, and alive. Like she feeds them raw garlic. She feeds them like they get herbal supplements every single day in mm -hmm. their food. Um, she literally has a giant fridge in her barn where she keeps all her essential oils and her herbs ready to go. Um, and she's got like different mixtures that she uses for herbal dewormer. Uh -huh. And it's just, it's a very time-consuming job to keep them healthy here just because of the worms you know the parasites so I just decided we're the lazy farmers <laughs> and I just I want to be able to do it holistically but as minimal work as possible yes so and you have a lot of knowledge about herbal supplements and stuff because that's uh, your business isn't it yep yep yeah, so I use oils and herbs on all of our animals. Like anytime yeah. our chickens get injured, we mm -hmm. use essential oils. We use Young Living essential oils, and that's my business. Um, and so, have you written any? Uh, have you ever written any blogs or information Not about that? Not yet. Yeah? Okay. But that's coming. Okay. I feel like the first two years, I wanted to just experience it and really like gain gain knowledge yeah. on how to use oils on animals mm -hmm. first, because before that, all of my experience has been using with oils with children and adults yeah. and infants, not as much animals. Like I've used them on my cats, you know, when we lived in the city, but now I have an extensive knowledge of using them on animals for mm -hmm. injuries or illness. I've dewormed my um, animals with essential oils. Wow, very using cool. Using Parafree, we use Parafree, which is actually a product that Young Living makes. It's specifically formulated for parasites. Wow. So we use that. I just mix it with um, olive oil or fractionated coconut oil, and then I give it to them in a syringe, like every day for the course of like two weeks. So wow, that's so cool. So yeah. So yeah, so, well, I'll put a link to your your blog down in the description so yeah. that people can go check that out. Hopefully, in the future, you'll yeah. 
That'd be awesome. Give us that awesome information. That's fantastic. I'll share my bacon grease tips. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. And how to cook with bacon grease. If oh, you don't yeah. like vegetables, maybe you should try cooking them in some bacon grease. <laughs> That'll fix it. Because then maybe you'll like vegetables. That's right. <laughs> um, so you put raw oregano in there and... And oregano oil. Oregano oil. And, oil. and that's a and garlic. Anti antibacterial and yep. it helps keep them healthy and then this is like an organic feed that we get from mm -hmm. a farm in nashville called windy acres nice and they grow everything organically that's great it's just north of nashville they're one of the only farms that we've been able to find that grow their own wow. feed for animals that's fantastic how do you get it? Do you have to go pick it up? Yeah, you have to go and pick it up. Yeah. Yep. All right, everybody. That's going to be it for this episode of Nature's Always Right. Hope you enjoyed. 